Knowing where to begin with sound effects can be pretty daunting. You fire up a sound effects library, search whatever it is you need and get thousands of results back. There is quite a lot to learn as you go into it, but today we're looking at how sound effects can be layered to build more immersive scenes. Step one is knowing what mood you're after. So if we take the same shot, just by the color grade and the sound effects, we can change it from being a happy and kind of optimistic feeling shot, or moody and suspenseful. Just the grade and the sound design there really change the mood of it. So as you're going about your sound effects, you want to know what mood it is that you're aiming for. That'll help you narrow it down as you start hunting through all of your sound effects. The second step is to work out all of the different elements in your scene that you're going to need covered. Maybe there's birds, maybe there's traffic, maybe there's some kind of ominous rumble that you need to tell the story. Maybe there's a huge crowd of people. Whatever it is, you want to work that out because it's unlikely that you're just going to find one sound effect that covers all of the different aspects of your scene. You're probably going to have to piece things together. So first you want to work out what those different elements are that you need. So with this shot here, I could search for city and that would get me a bunch of stuff, but none of it's going to be exactly what I'm looking for. So what is it that we actually see in the shot? There are pedestrians and therefore voices as well. We can see some bikes passing by. I also have some freedom with things that aren't literally in the scene. So even though we can't see any cars, I can tell that we're in a city here. So I'm able to add some more distant sounding traffic and that's going to work as well. So this step of finding the elements that you're after is really important. Because if you just found three different city sounds and stuck them all together, they don't each have their space, and so they just become a big wall of sound. Whereas actually going through looking for each part that you're after allows you to have much more nuance and detail. So this leads us right into step number three, which is actually finding the sound effects that we need. So by this point we already know the elements that make up our scene, so we can go and search for those. So if I look at my scene here, the first thing I'm going to want is obviously the sound of the water close up. It's pretty rough, it's kind of water rapids that I'm needing. I can also see a bridge going over, so there's probably some distant traffic happening, but not heaps, it's not going to be a very present traffic sound. There's lots of trees, so that I can put some wind in the trees there. So those are the sounds that I need, but I also need to think about the frequency response of each of them as I choose them. I don't want them all to be low and rumbly, I don't want them all to be too thin sounding, so I need to be careful of that as I go through. So as I think about my list of sounds in this shot, I can make my distant traffic be the low rumbly stuff. The water is going to be the most present and intense thing, so it's going to be pretty full across the frequency range. And then maybe the wind in the trees, I can find something thin sounding that can fill in the top end of my mix. You can see how thinking about it like this allows each of the sounds to have their own place, whether that's the low, the mid, or the highs that they're sitting in, rather than just stacking sounds on top of each other that all sound the same. If that was helpful to you though, it'd be great if you hit the like button so more people can find this video. If you want to take this a step further, you can actually use EQ to exaggerate this in each of your sounds. So I can take my distant traffic and take all of the high end out of it so that it's just the low rumble. You can play around with this with each of your sounds and that's just going to make your sounds more unique, more tailored to your particular piece rather than being the sort of generic sounds you've pulled straight out of a library somewhere. Once you've found your sounds though, you'll need to just balance them. And unfortunately, there aren't really any rules I can share with you on this. It's pretty much to taste and it's going to be different for each scene. But just make sure that you're hearing the elements that you thought of at the start before you went finding your sound effects. But that is basically it. That's how you build an ambience track. Once you've got that running really well, you're going to want to make sure that your music is good as well. And so I have a video you can click on the screen now running through how to edit music for your videos. So thanks for watching this one. Hope it was helpful and I will see you in the next one.